Welcome to True Freedom News, where we talk about things that really matter in life. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the new genetically modified apple and the potential ramifications that could have on our health. Is this apple good for us or is it deadly for us? Let's find out. There is news tonight about the quest for the perfect apple, one that doesn't brown when you slice it. Sounds too good to be true? Well, it's not, and it's coming to a grocery store near you. So the first question we have to ask ourselves is, does nature, so incredible as it is, have an intention for fruits and vegetables, uh, these things that we eat and put into our bodies that serve us and nurture us, does it have a purpose for these fruits and vegetables to turn brown, to decompose, to then go back to the soil and provide nutrients for new life to grow. Now, if we're genetically modifying apples so that they don't turn brown, or it takes them much longer to turn brown, then what are we really doing? That's the question we have to ask ourselves as we really look further into this conversation. Here's ABC's Gloria Riviera. Watch this, a time-lapse video of two seemingly identical apples. With time, the apple on the left browning as normal after cut, bruised, or bitten. The apple on the right still perfect. The difference, science. The apples are a brainchild of a small Canadian company, Okanagan Specialty Fruits. They say their Arctic apples, a version of the Granny Smith and Golden Delicious, have a suppressed enzyme that delays browning. It will still rot eventually, but stay cosmetically superior for longer. So that's an important point for us to also take a look at, is what is the intention behind genetically modifying this apple? Are these companies, these scientists, genetically modifying it so that it is healthier for us, it is more pure for us, it provides us more nutrients, it gives more life to our body? Or are they genetically modifying it so that it lasts longer, so they can sell more, so that it stays on shelves longer, so they have less waste and they make more profits? You see, if we can look at the intention behind any action that's happening, we can usually determine the result before the result happens. This week, the U.S. Department of Agriculture approved the Arctic apples, a genetically modified non-browning apple, deciding that they are not likely to have a significant impact on the human environment. So this part to me is a little bit concerning because uh, the USDA, which this is an organization that does not determine the health impacts or the health ramifications of the food, what they're interested in, does that particular substance, that particular source of food harm or pose any negative results for the environment around it? And what's troubling to me is that their response says it's not likely to have a significant impact. Well, not likely doesn't really give us very much evidence, does it? Let me show you the approval letter uh, that the USDA has announced. And this is a stakeholder announcement. It says right here, the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service is announcing its decision to deregulate two apple varieties genetically engineered to resist browning. It's taking this action based on a final plant pest risk assessment PPRA, or PPRA for short, that finds the GE apples, genetically engineered apples, are unlikely to pose a plant pet risk to agriculture and other plants in the United States. So again, they're really determining here, does this have an impact on the pests or on the nearby plants? And they're saying it's unlikely. Well, there's not much evidence here that says either or. Uh, from the USDA, but they went ahead and approved it. We asked customers, how do you like them apples? If I knew up front, I probably wouldn't have a problem with it. In fact, I'm a bit intrigued to try it. I don't mind that they turn brown. I mean, you can do the same thing with lemon juice to keep them from browning. I think she has a good point there, that if we don't want our apples to turn brown, we could take something from nature like lemon juice, which is a natural preservative, so is salt and we could put a little bit of lemon juice on it and it'll last quite a bit longer because again, nature has provided us with preservatives. Now, what we've done here is we've gone into the laboratories and said, well, let's be smarter than nature, right? Let's try and make these last longer. But where lemon juice helps to preserve it naturally without affecting the DNA in a sense that they're manipulating the genes, what the scientists in, in, in the laboratories are doing here with these apples is they're actually going in and manipulating the enzymes and the genes of the apple. 
And so the question, again, we have to ask ourselves is, what kind of long-term effect is that going to have on the human body? Critics are concerned about misleading customers who may accidentally bite into an apple that is much older than it appears. Already 80% of the corn and soybeans Americans consume are genetically altered. We have to ask ourselves about soybeans and corn. Now, why were those genetically altered? Uh, originally, the, we were told that uh, genetic modification was so that we could provide more food for the people that were starving. Well, since they've been genetically modifying corn and soy, there has been little impact on the starving population. Now, what they use the GMO corn and GMO soy for is mostly as additives and sweeteners and fillers in most of the preservative-filled, highly processed, highly sugarized foods that you'll find on most of your grocery stores. But as for these Arctic apples, the earliest you would see them in your grocery store would be 2017. So now that's something that I think is good for me to hear is that uh, they're not going to put them in grocery stores immediately. They're saying 2017. Now obviously this still needs to get passed by the FDA and so uh, hopefully they'll ask a lot more questions and do a lot more studies. But when it comes to genetically modifying nature, there's nobody else that I know of who has done the most research or who has helped compile the research from different sources and who's helped to, spoken and raised the most awareness around genetically modified food than Jeffrey Smith. And Jeffrey Smith is the founder of the Institute for Responsible Technology. I've had a chance to meet him and talk with him personally. I've had a chance to have him speak at my conferences. I've actually had a chance to have him in our magazines and the information he shares is pretty startling. Here's an interview with Jeffrey that I think is pretty powerful. When it comes to genetically modified foods, do we know the potential danger to our bodies? I mean, we haven't been through, I don't think, more than one generation mm -hmm. of these. You know, I know they're being tested on lab animals and things like that, but do we know the potential two or three generations down the road? When the American Academy of Environmental Medicine evaluated the animal feeding studies on GMOs, they found that there was clear causal evidence linking the GM feed to reproductive disorders, immune system problems, accelerated aging, organ damage, gastrointestinal problems, and dysfunctional regulation of cholesterol and insulin. They, they there's a lot of issues right there. That's huge. You know, there's uh, something that he shares in a magazine I produce called Integrated Health Magazine. Uh, this is a magazine we publish. You can download it on iTunes. And one of the things that he says in here is, um, if you don't trust GMOs, you're not alone, because according to a 2013 survey by Hartman Group, over 120 million Americans say they try to avoid them. Over 120 million Americans are aware of GMOs and try to avoid them, and that number has more than doubled since 2007. Now, many of the issues he just spoke about that are being attributed to genetically modified organisms like corn and soy and these types of things I mean, that is uh, pretty staggering. Let's repeat some of the things here. Infertility, immune problems, accelerated aging, faulty insulin regulations, changes in major organs in the gastrointestinal system. Now, there's been a lot of studies done on GMOs over the last couple of decades, so that's not you know, short-term scientific knowledge. These are massive amounts of studies that have been done uh, in many places around the world, and that's this information that Jeffrey's sharing right here. They, they urged all doctors to prescribe non-GMO diets to all patients. Now we have thousands of doctors doing just that, and they're reporting that their patients are getting better along these same categories of diseases. So when I speak, as I did today and several times this past week, I ask them how many of you are endeavoring to move GMOs from your diet, and many hands go up. And I say, okay, how many of you are noticing improvements in your health as a result? And nearly every hand goes up again. And they'd report immune system problems like asthma, allergies, and autoimmune disease get better or go away. Digestive problems, the same thing. Reproductive problems, headaches, lethargy, mental, mental problems. It's across the board. And it's it sounds like one of those bad pharmaceutical commercials that says, you know, this will give you freedom in your life. Take this drug now. And then at the end, the last you know, half of the commercial is somebody telling you all the wonderful side effects that you're going to have, like uh, irritable bowel syndrome and bleeding from the anus, and maybe your eyeballs are going to pop out, and you might even grow a second head, right? That's what it sounds like here, like he's 
telling us the disclaimers from a drug from a pharmaceutical company, yet this is coming from our food, from corn and soy, and now they're trying to genetically modify apples, and there's a lot of other GMO foods out there as well that actually most people don't realize, but about 70% of the food on the shelves in your grocery store has some kind of genetically modified ingredient inside of it. Every single time I speak, the same categories come up. Now, when individuals get rid of GMOs, they have to buy organic or they have to switch out to non-processed foods because it's not labeled. But the animals, when the livestock is taken, are taken off of GM soy or corn and given non-GM soy or corn instead, there's no cofactors. It's just that one change. And they're getting better along the same lines. So as humans report an elimination of irritable bowel, the pigs no longer have diarrhea. The humans get rid of the ulcers, so do the pigs. The um, human's immune system strengthens. The use of antibiotic disease, uh, medicines goes down in the animals. It's a dramatic, and sometimes within two or three days, a dramatic result with these animals that switch out GMOs from their diet. And I hear this from both the farmers and the veterinarians and even pet owners. So I think that's something really important for us to consider is that in a lot of cases where these animals, they're removing the GMO corn and GMO soy from the diet, that the animals' issues, diseases that they've been having start going away and they notice this even within a couple of days, they notice massive benefits. And so humans across the board are also reporting these same issues starting to improve and eventually go away when they eliminate GMO food from their diet. So. The question we have to ask ourselves is this, is do we know enough about genetically modified organisms to call them safe? Do we have enough evidence, scientific evidence to say, you know, these genetically modified foods are actually better for us? Because if they're not better for us, then why are we taking them? Well, certainly they're cheaper, right? Because they can mass produce them, they can last longer, they resist pests better, that sort of thing. So they make them cheaper, cheaper and easier to access in the grocery store. But what I've come to realize is that long term, if you're going to have to be paying health bills, if you're going to have to be paying sick days off of work, if you're going to have to be paying for your children to get more checkups and your health insurance can cover and have to pay for more medications, and in the long run you're sick and diseased and not feeling well, is that worth saving a few dollars here and there at the grocery store? Or is there a better option we have to start choosing things like organic foods, non-GMO foods, uh, growing our own food where all we have to do is pay for the seed in the soil and in many cases the water's free. We can grow our own food inside our homes next to a window. We can grow it in our backyard. We can grow it in our gardens. I've certainly taken steps for myself and my family over the years to eliminate 99% of GMOs out of our diet. And I can tell you what, it's really not that much more expensive, but the health benefits from it are so much greater. There's a resource I want to share with you here that uh, Jeffrey has shared with us. It's called nongmoshoppingguide.com. Nongmoshoppingguide.com. This is a website you can find products. Uh, healthy products that do not have uh, GMOs inside of them. I highly recommend taking it out. My advice in this is, you know, there's not enough evidence, there's not enough research, there's not enough benefit for ha putting GMOs into our diet. So why would we approve this apple? I would vote no against this apple. I think it should go up for a public vote. I don't think that the private sector should determine what kind of genetically modifying uh, scientific studies are healthiest for our bodies. I think the local and regional and national and international public needs to get involved and, and vote and say, yes, we want this because it's better for us, or no, we don't want it. There's not enough evidence here that's going to support us. Thank you for watching True Freedom News. Leave me your thoughts and comments below. Let me know how you're going to get involved and what you think about the non-GMO apple. Share this video, share this episode, and subscribe here.